Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into The Storytelling Edge, a compelling guide on the power of narratives authored by content strategy experts Joe Lazowskis and Shane Snow. Released in 2018, the book unveils how storytelling is not just an art, but a crucial skill that shapes influence and leadership in modern society. Drawing insights from a Native American proverb that proclaims, those who tell the stories run the world. Lazowskis, as the director of content strategy and editor-in-chief of Contently, together with Snow, Contently's co-founder, demonstrate the immense value of storytelling for individuals, businesses, and governments keen on making an impactful presence in a crowded and fast-paced world. Combining their backgrounds in journalism with their expertise in content creation, the authors equip readers with strategies for crafting compelling narratives that resonate with audiences. With their hands-on experience helping Fortune 500 companies navigate the landscape of brand storytelling, Lazowskas and Snow bring a wealth of practical knowledge to aspiring storytellers across various fields. The storytelling edge is particularly essential for marketing and advertising professionals, brand managers, copywriters, and entrepreneurs seeking to harness the transformative power of storytelling in building compelling brands and engaging their target audiences. Join us as we explore the secrets to becoming an influential narrator in your own right and discover how you can own the room or even the world with just the power of a good story. The Storytelling Edge, How to Transform Your Business, Stop Screaming into the Void, and Make People Love You. Introduction, Unlock the Art of Storytelling and Transform Your Message. Once upon a time in Melbourne, Amanda Palmer, an American artist, stood armed not with instruments but with placards as she embarked on a one-woman campaign to redefine her music career. Ditching her traditional label, she took to Kickstarter with a story that was far more persuasive than any conventional pitch. Her journey, her aspirations, and a sincere plea to support her independent path and reward her fellow artists. The outcome? A staggering $1.2 million in just 30 days, proving that when it comes to engaging and mobilizing an audience, storytelling reigns supreme. This narrative thread of Amanda Palmer weaves perfectly into the greater tapestry of human evolution, where tales have propelled us to astonishing heights and, at times, prompted our deepest follies. The charisma of a strong leader is often laced with the enchanting power of their anecdotes. The hidden secret, inviting to all, is that this magnetic trait of storytelling isn't preordained. It's a craft that can be cultivated by anyone willing to learn. Embark on this journey through the art of storytelling and unravel the cerebral magic that makes narratives so captivating. We'll peer into the annals of history and the modern world to discover lessons from Renaissance rumor mills, the newspaper tycoons of the United States, and even the common threads that connect beloved tales like Romeo and Juliet to the galaxy-spanning saga of Star Wars. Through these stories within stories, you'll grasp the why and how of constructing your own compelling narrative and watch as the world tilts its ear closer to hear what you have to say. Part 1. Unlocking Memory. The Science Behind Storytelling's Impact. Take a stroll through the cobbled streets of history to an encounter that occurred between Jacques Prévert, a French poet, and a blind beggar. Bereft of luck and loose change, the beggar's predicament was unchanged until the literary touch of Prévert transformed his sign into a profound narrative. Spring is coming, but I won't see it. This simple yet evocative sentence turned passers-by into patrons and filled the beggar's hat with the generosity of strangers. But why this dramatic change? The crux of this revelation is that the human brain is intrinsically programmed to be captivated by stories rather than mere fact statements. To illustrate this, envision two health classes. In the first, a teacher bombards students with grim statistics on drug use. In the neighboring room, another teacher unfolds the heartbreaking saga of Johnny, a good kid ensnared by drugs, 
vastly changing the impact of the message. What differentiates the outcomes of these classes? Neuroscience gifts us the phrase, neurons that fire together, wire together, describing the memory-anchoring phenomenon of cooperative brain activity. While straightforward declarations trigger a minimal portion of the brain, the richness of stories engages our minds on several fronts, emotion, sensation, imagery, and complex thought processes. Reflect on the two high school classes. The first merely skims the cerebral surface with its logic and figures. The second, however, incites an intellectual symphony. Students immerse themselves in Johnny's narrative, relating it to their own lives, pondering choices, and forecasting consequences. This multi-layered neural activity is precisely why the second lesson lodges itself more firmly in their minds. As a result, the tale of Johnny becomes a touchstone in their own life stories, influencing their decisions when confronted with the daunting challenges of youth. Stories, it turns out, don't just entertain. They transform and stick with us, shaping our memories and our futures. Part 2. Storytelling Alchemy, the essential ingredients of engagement and suspense. Imagine a tale of two lovers, Jack and Jill, whose journey together is without hurdles or heartache, seamlessly sailing from friendship to marriage and then to an uneventful ever after. It's simple, it's sweet, but let's face it, the story lacks a certain spark. This observation brings us to a cardinal rule of storytelling. Great stories resonate with their audience while also weaving in elements of novelty and suspense. Why do people gravitate toward narratives that mirror their own experiences? It's because there's comfort in familiarity. We often find pieces of ourselves tucked in the fictional lives of characters connecting on a personal level, whether it's through articles enumerating the quirks of our own demographic or the timeless tale of a daydreaming farm boy longing for adventure as in Star Wars. Now, let's revisit the mundane love story of Jack and Jill. It's relatable, sure, but it lacks novelty, that unique spark that separates the mundane from the magical. After all, who would want to watch a film where the most thrilling event is a dust-up over who does the dishes? Here's where the element of novelty steps in. It's a product of our evolutionary need for vigilance in a world teeming with unknowns. So when we're presented with the unfamiliar, a galaxy far, far away, or the intricate society of a high-tech dystopia, our brain's attention circuits light up, urging us to lean in and explore. However, novelty alone cannot sustain a story. Enter tension, the very pulse of narrative progression. Aristotle once explained that great stories toy with the contrast between the current state and the potential. By constantly opening and closing this gap, storytellers instill a sense of suspense. Consider Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, similar to Jack and Jill in its framework of young love, but infused with agonizing tension. Every scene, every act, strains against the fierce societal currents opposing the young lovers, captivating the audience right up to its poignant end. In essence, a narrative without relatability is uninspiring. One without novelty is predictable, and a story devoid of tension is merely a sequence of events. It's the masterful blend of these three components, the connection to the reader's self, the lure of the unknown, and the relentless pull of suspense that transmutes an ordinary yarn into an unforgettable saga. Part 3. Simplicity in Storytelling, The Hemingway Effect. Ernest Hemingway's prose if put to the test of a reading-level calculator, unveils an astonishing truth. His writing resonates with the straightforwardness of a fourth-grade student's. The acclaimed Nobel laureate, who strides the literary world like a colossus, crafts narratives that a ten-year-old could navigate with ease. And he's not alone. J.K. Rowling and Cormac McCarthy follow suit, their works also mirroring this accessibility. Beneath this surprising revelation, lies a profound storytelling truth. The essence of great storytelling lies in valuing fluency over complexity. This means that the giants of writing prioritize smooth, clear narrative flow. 
avoiding the intricacies that might snag a reader's comprehension. Exploring this phenomenon revealed a striking pattern. The most celebrated and influential writers across various genres tend to present their ideas at a lower reading level than less esteemed counterparts. Their literary prowess isn't demonstrated through dense vocabulary or convoluted sentences, but through the simplicity and directness with which they communicate their tales. But the principle of fluency transcends the realm of printed words. Consider the cinematic landscape. For instance, the original Star Wars film underwent a radical editing process that stripped away the slow and static methods typical to science fiction, favoring instead rapid cuts and swift transitions. This innovative style captivated audiences, not by letting them ruminate over complex scenes, but by carrying them swiftly through an electrifying journey. Much like the force of Hemingway's deceptively simple prose, this approach to storytelling hones the audience's focus on the narrative's essence, the characters, the suspense, and the overarching themes. By eliminating the need for mental exertion to decode language or interpret lengthy shots, stories become instantly more absorbable. In every storyteller's toolkit, regardless of medium or message, efficiency and smooth progression from one story beat to the next is paramount. This craftsmanship often goes unnoticed when skillfully executed, but therein lies its true power. It's not the flair of complexity, but the elegance of simplicity that truly captivates and transports an audience through the art of story. Part 4. The Oxytocin Connection. How Stories Bond Us with Our Tribe. Picture a scenario where spectators are decked out with science fiction-like gadgets, monitoring their every biological whisper as they watch James Bond dodge yet another near escape. Predictably, pulses quicken, palms sweat, the usual trappings of a spy thriller's suspense. But among these predictable reactions, researchers discovered a surge of oxytocin, a chemical that underpins our capacity for empathy. Oxytocin is what emotionally binds us to others, igniting concern and care. Tracing back to primordial roots, this neurochemical was pivotal for ancient humans to discern friends from foes. It was essentially a tribal recognition system, encoded within our very chemistry. This brings us to a profound truth. Stories have the power to stir empathy within us for members of our tribe. When Bond graces the screen, viewers unconsciously adopt him into their personal tribe, driven by oxytocin and the familiarity that builds as his story unfolds. Our natural inclination to empathize heightens our investment in his narrative, urging us to remain glued to his fate. But the influence of stories and oxytocin stretches beyond entertainment into the realms of politics and business. Take the 1963 American Civil Rights March in Washington, D.C. The tales of individuals like Rosa Parks conveyed the stark reality of segregation, broadening the societal lens to recognize African Americans as integral members of the national tribe. Those stories fueled a collective empathy that galvanized a country to campaign for change. Similarly, Ford Motors experienced a powerful resurgence by harnessing the narrative of redemption and relatability. By conceding past shortcomings and showcasing the dedicated people behind their revamped automobiles, Ford reintroduced itself as a tribe familiar to viewers. The makers and patrons of these vehicles were their own kin and neighbors. Such stories resonate deeply, fostering a sense of shared identity and purpose. They demonstrate that when we are presented with a narrative that connects us to a collective tribe, it can move us in powerful ways, shaping both our emotions and actions. Through stories, disparate individuals can be united by a strong, almost instinctual, bond of empathy and solidarity. Part 5. The Renaissance of Publishing. Content Strategy Across Centuries. In the intricate social web of 16th century Italy, where the fervor of power plays and family feuds was the order of the day, a pioneering form of media emerged. The Avisi, essentially the gossip columns of the Renaissance. Writers scoured Milan, gathering juicy tidbits 
and reproduced them via the marvel of the printing press. But speed trumped precision, and the demand for immediate handwritten accounts soon outpaced the printed word's punctuality. This leads us to an enduring lesson. The method of dissemination is as significant as the nature of the content itself. Milan's denizens craved the latest whispers, preferring hastily scribbled notes available by sunset over tidia, but belated printed papers. To thrive, Avisi adapted, prioritizing speed and accessibility to maintain their readers' engagement. This historical vignette uncovers a timeless three-phase template for audience engagement. Initially, it's about content creation. In bygone Milan, this entailed weaving through the cityscape, ears tuned for the next shocking secret. Today, it could be drafting a compelling blog post. Next, content needs visibility, akin to plastering a pamphlet on a bustling square, or in contemporary terms, hitting publish on a digital platform. The final frontier is optimization. For obviously writers, switching from the press to the pen amplified their spread. In modern contexts, dissecting audience metrics and behaviors is key. Do they tilt towards bite-sized tweets or meatier newsletter essays? Speaking of mastering optimization, Upworthy, a digital media titan birthed in 2012, epitomizes this tactic. Their strategy was to curate, overlooked yet moving content, adding their own spin, and leveraging Facebook for distribution. Every click, view, and share was a valuable data point, helping hone their packaging until they struck viral gold. Upworthy's empirical finesse in content transformation propelled them to unprecedented growth, accelerating their audience reach at warp speed. Stories from Renaissance Milan to the digital dashboards of Upworthy underline an immutable truth. What you publish captivates, but how you publish determines the breadth and depth of its impact. Part 6. Dive Below the Surface. The Enduring Value of Depth in Journalism. The end of the 19th century heralded an era of information overload in America, especially in bustling metropolises like New York, where newspapers jostled for the public's fleeting attention with sensationalist headlines. But in an age where content was a dime a dozen and alliance to one paper over another was a novelty, it was time to delve deeper. When content floods every corner, it's the depth that sets you apart. Such was the notion that sparked a revolution in the offices of the New York world, helmed by the visionary Joseph Pulitzer. His ambition was not to simply join the chorus of newspapers, but to stand out as the voice that truly resonated with New Yorkers. Pulitzer's game-changing strategy materialized through the tenacity of Nellie Bly, a pioneering journalist at a time when her field was a stronghold of masculinity. Armed with resolve, Bly sought to dive beneath the surface, eschewing fleeting shocks for enduring substance. Her audacious investigation into the grim reality of an asylum, feigning insanity to expose the truth from within, changed the landscape of American journalism. Her series captivated readers, transforming the way they interacted with news. More importantly, it sparked reforms in mental health care and fostered a novel trend allegiance to a single news source. Bly exemplified the power of in-depth reporting to foster loyalty and remold an industry. In our current era, where digital platforms churn a relentless stream of content, the lessons from Joseph Pulitzer's and Nellie Bly's ventures into deep quality journalism have not diminished. It's a clarion call to content creators drowning in a sea of quantity over quality, depth, relevance, and investigative rigor can both enlighten your audience and engender fidelity in an increasingly transient media landscape. Final summary. The art of storytelling is more than just a way to entertain. It's an essential tool that speaks directly to the human experience. We are all naturally drawn to stories because they awaken multiple regions of the brain, making them stickier and more impactful than mere facts ever could. From the galaxy-spanning epics of Star Wars to the literary mastery of Ernest Hemingway, 
effective stories share common threads. They are relatable, novel, full of tension, and crucially, fluently presented. But the effectiveness of a great story doesn't solely hinge on the content. The method of its delivery is equally vital. As we learned from the handwritten gossip sheets of Renaissance Milan and the journalistic depths plumbed by Nellie Bly, the way stories are shared can dramatically affect their reach and resonance. As storytellers navigate the crowded waters of today's content-rich environment, quality becomes the beacon that sets them apart. In the whirlwind of information that defines our era, those who master nuance, depth, and the magic of narrative are the ones who leave a lasting impression on their audience, proving once again that when it comes to connection and persuasion, storytelling holds the edge. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.